17 and a half here. Uh, why it shouldn't happen. Scare tactics. My cat. Hairspray. The invisible flame. Problem solved. Know of him, she gushed. I dream of him. He could be in a band. Well, he knows of you, too. I lit the burner in a couple of tries, although it was hard to tell that I'd succeeded. The flame switched from blue to purple to yellow, and then, when I turned the gas up as high as it would go, it became nearly invisible. Confused by its invisibility, I stupidly put my finger where the flame should have been and quickly discovered it was indeed burning. That was stupid, said Danielle distracted from the thought of Jeff Slade for a moment by my quiet cursing over my new blister. Thanks, I said as I sucked my finger. Danielle looked at me funny. That was sarcasm, I explained. When she looked even funnier at me, I took my finger out of my mouth and said, Never mind. But what about Jeff Slade? She whined as soon as she remembered what we'd been discussing. At this point, I was of two minds. I was thinking Danielle was kind of a jerk for not caring more about my burnt finger, and that she was obviously stupid to have a crush on Jeff Slade, who, it was clear to me, would use her like a Kleenex and throw her away when she got boring, which, based on my limited experience with her, wouldn't take all that long. I was thinking maybe I ought to just hand her over and let Slade chew her up and spit her out. But the good angel on my shoulder was looking out for my fellow freshman, I couldn't allow even a nincompoop like Danielle to get worked by the likes of Slade. What I had to do, I realized, was tell her Slade was hot for her, while at the same time persuading her not to go out with him. And I had to do it in a way that wouldn't allow her to realize that I was against her dating Slade. If it got back to him that I'd warned her off him, instead of talking him up, I'd be back on Slade's hit list for sure. I decided to tell her exactly what Slade had been saying, my theory being that she'd get scared. Well, I said as I held the test tube over the burner using a little wire grip, Slade is crazy about you. Really, she said. Her black ringed eyes opened wide. Yeah, he says he'd love to get you in the back of his van. Stupidly, I believed this would be shocking enough that Danielle would shy away at the word van and all its sordid connotations. End of story. I was very wrong. What does he say he wants to do with me in the back of his van? She said slyly. Suddenly I was on my heels. Well, I can't remember. Let me think. I scrambled to find my rhetorical feet. Danielle tapped the eraser of the pencil she was using to take our lab notes with the, on the table. She was feeling her teeth with her tongue in anticipation. He said he wants you to... I began, but it was suddenly hard for me to speak. I clammed up. For the next minute or more, I just kept saying, You know, he wants to... And I'd spit my hands around in the air as if that meant something. I had to actually say something if I was going to scare Danielle, so I went beyond what I ever thought would sound legit to her. I went for a shocker right away, hoping to end with one disgusting sexual reference what had become a surprisingly difficult discussion. He wants you to suck his... I said. I raised my eyebrows twice and did the hand thing again because I couldn't go through with it and say what I thought I was going to say. But I didn't have to. Danielle got it. Instead of a look of horror crossing her face as I had expected, Danielle smiled a little knowing smile. What else? she asked, not even blinking. I noticed she was leaning in closer to me from across the table. Her rear end was swaying back and forth. She reminded me of our horny cat. Well, I said, trying to come up with something else that might scare her. He said he wants uh, to get rough with you, you know, like he wants to spank you or something. He, he says he likes it that way. She smiled a dreamy smile and nodded. So, she said, he's one of those. This wasn't working at all. Instead of deterring her from going out with Slade, I was clearly stoking the fires of her passion. Meanwhile, our chemistry experiment was continuing smoothly, much more smoothly than my effort to keep Danielle from dating Slade. The next step, according to my directions, was to remove the solution made from the yellowish solid and the H2O from the heat from the burner. I placed the test tube, now containing a boiling yellow, yellow liquid, into the test tube holder we'd been given. 
He said, I went on after I read that we were now to allow the solution we'd made to cool for five minutes, and I tried to think of the worst thing a guy could do to a girl. Nothing was coming to mind. He said, I repeated, that he wants to tie you up in the back of his van and have sex with you. And he wants to keep you in there, and he wants to have sex with you anytime he wants. You'll be, like, his hostage? It came out as a question, and I attempted to make up for my lack of conviction by cringing at how awful it would be. Sold, said Danielle, in a voice that sounded more like a purr. Danielle, I saw, was physically aroused by my simple descriptions of what Slade was going to do to her. I dared not go on for fear that she would lose control of herself right then and there in class. Also, I couldn't think of anything nasty enough to deter her. That was obvious. I'd failed. He's so bad, she said in a low growl, her eyes sparkling and alive. She stretched her hands out across the table toward me, her lab coat opening slightly. She was rubbing herself against the table. What else did he say he wanted to do to me, she whispered, leaning even closer. Earlier, I mentioned Danielle's hair, how big it was. I also mentioned the flame on the Bunsen burner, how it was invisible. I didn't mention yet what hairspray is made of, but it's important to what happened next. Hairspray is mostly composed of water and alcohol. Alcohol is flammable. In fact, one of Squid's favorite things to do when left unsupervised was to collect all the aerosol cans in his house, many of them different hairsprays his mother had tried, and see which made the biggest fireball when he sprayed their contents into a lit flame. One of the cans of hairspray always won. Now, Danielle's claw was one of the biggest in our school. She told me once that she got up at five every morning and that it took nearly two hours of prep every day. She said much of that time was spent spraying her hair, her claw, although she never would have called it that, into place. It took layer upon layer of hairspray to achieve the volume she insisted upon. She went through nearly a can of Aquanet every morning, she bragged. Once, when Squid threw a can of his mother's hairspray into a fire pit, the explosion was enough to make the neighbors come running. And that can, Squid kept, set, kept saying after the fact, and in, in, his, in amazement, was only half full. As she leaned over the table and her hair came within range of the clear flame of the burner, it began to react the way cotton candy reacts to water. It began to crinkle and shrink back towards her forehead. In a matter of seconds, it nearly disappeared. She kept smiling her dreamy smile, but all the while her hair was shrinking, turning into what looked like tiny black worms coming out of her head. I couldn't find any words. I simply pointed at her forehead, my eyes wide, until she snapped out of her drowsy, eroticized state and began screaming and slapping herself on the top of her head like Larry Curley and Moe did on the Three Stooges when they were really frustrated about something. By the time she got the fire out, all that was left of her once monumental hairball was a black, stinky splotch on her forehead. I look awful, she said. I kept my mouth shut. She did. She was half bald. She looked like a Barbie some boys with a lighter had gotten a hold of. As we left class that day, Slade was standing just outside our classroom, ready to reap the rewards of my introductory discussions with Danielle. Instead of a worshipful freshman girl, however, he was met by the toxic stink of burnt hair. Danielle slipped quickly away down the hall, her books covering her head, before he could talk to her. "'What the hell's wrong with her?' demanded Slade. She burned her hairball off. "'On purpose? She had a great hairball.' "'No, not on purpose.' Slade, unconsciously, I'm sure, felt his own heavily sprayed mullet, making sure all was well up there. Damn, he said. She looked like a girl I could get serious with. It'll be just a little while, I said helpfully, before her hair grows back. I can't wait that long, said Slade. He shook my hand. He could be oddly formal at times. Thanks anyway, brother. I replayed him calling me brother in my mind the rest of the school day. All had amazingly turned out well. That harmony and balance would not last long. In fact, only a few, few days later, I blew the whole thing up.